how Memnon used the scream of the Hola Wata to defeat the Dinganek. During the night of celebration, as Memnon lay under a Tay-Tay seductive spell, victorious soldiers and citizens, elated with the hard-fought packs, talked and drank for hours. In one raucous tavern, one soldier told grand tales of Memnon and how he used the scream of the Holowata to defeat the Dinganek. The fabulistic soldier said, We were. You weren't there, said one boisterously drunk soldier seated at another table. Briefly silenced, but confident in the truth of his experience and plagued by gory memories of the Dinganek chewing the flesh of his fallen comrades until he heard the screaming, the fabulistic soldier replied, To this day, I wish I wasn't there. I would trade in those awesome days of torment for the dullest days in the library's great archives. That house, the most extraordinary collection of stories, another soldier interrupted. Please finish the story. Don't do that Greek thing making every blasted thing into a metaphor. The fabulistic soldier replied. What would the trice great Zhuti, lord of writing and education, say if I was not a docent at all times? Think of the children. Upon hearing this statement, the brazen bartender announced, There better not be any children in my tavern. Other patrons looked around. None saw any children. And with the rabble now silent, the fabulistic soldier continued his tale. The days were as long and torrential as the raging Huama River, awash in waves of heat, marching for days through thick hot forests, inhabited by giant insects and man-eating beasts only the bravest have dared to face. We came across the hidden cities of the Tiwa, rectangular brick walls, some claimed were designed by Aido, walls within massive walls with paths leading into trees and staircases carved from the interiors. Sculptures of the great Tiwa kings birthed from great walls themselves. The Tiwa gave us the hunting party of Great Memnon, a place to rest. In the cool underground palaces of the Tiwa, we dined on Niyama, Choma, Ugali, roasted makai, and fish. The women were as lovely as blooming orchids growing wild in the woods. Sadly, we had to leave the forest cities of the Tiwa for the great towers of the Urewe, great towers housing the mighty forges and bellows of the Urewe, towers and temples, and great halls decorated in ornate bronze and gold tapestries. The city was more massive than the Xi'an, Babylon, Nagata, Alada, or Anshan, but a third of the city was closed. A beast had taken up residence in the city's cisterns. Anyone attempting to enter that part of the city encountered the wrath of a beast with the skin of a leopard, a tail with the appearance of an enormous hand, the legs of a bull, with a mince crow's feet in place of hooves or paws. His head was like that of a spider and a dog. It could see all. Its ears were that of a hare, intensely sensitive to all sound. Thus, it was impossible to surprise the creature. Uyoma, a wealthy nobleman and brother of the king, asked for the aid of Memnon. However, his home and many of his properties were cut off. If it came across his mind that his brother let the creature loose to weaken him, Uyoma didn't reveal this to Memnon. Uyoma promised Memnon a third of his wealth, a wealth that could have made Creoesis of Lydia fester with envy. Memnon accepted, but his heart was not directed towards gold. His heart must have been carved out of honor. Memnon only seeks to honor those who deserve such honor. There was no time for rest. The creature waited for us, as though it was expecting Memnon. I and a few others were tasked with distracting the creature by running through buildings as the creature chased us. Bait. So mighty, so mighty was the creature that it pummeled walls with its giant hand tail, trying to grab me. It grabbed a few other soldiers and crushed them with its terrible tail. That's what awaited me if I had been caught. A bone-crushing, flesh-rendering squeeze. I ran inside homes until I came to a locked door. I happened to be in the creature's sights when I heard a deafening scream. I saw Memnon holding a large bird as one holds a shield. The Dinganek ended its rampage and fled the city. While other soldiers and I were distracting the Dinganek, Memnon went to find the Holowatsa. The gods gave this bird the secret of immortality to give to humans. All we would have needed to do was shed our skin. Instead, the hungry bird traded the secret to the snake for food, and as punishment, the gods cursed the bird with continuous experiences of excruciating pain. The bird was close by, but Memnon didn't have time to tell us his plan. Out of nowhere, the Dinganet came back and knocked the bird out of Memnon's hand. The Holowatsa flew away, screaming. I narrowly escaped the beast as it was charging, charging through the wall next to me. Memnon was flung through two homes and into the city wall. Before Memnon could fully rise, the beast used its hand to slap Memnon into another house. As the creature charged towards the rubble, Memnon leaped forth. Memnon, a raging lion, punched the beast once in its head, causing all of its eyes to fly out. At first, Memnon 
only wanted to scare off the creature. But that plan didn't work. So Mighty Memnon had to fight the beast and kill it with his fist. Our journey back was made easier by all of the aid Uyoma gave us. His aides helped us carry all of the treasure back to our lands. This was, of course, after the Great Feast.